Sky's Katie Stallard reports from the Jakobshaven Glacier near the town of Iliasat in Greenland. We sail through the night in a world of perpetual day. This far north in the Arctic summer, the darkness barely forms. But the timelessness of this place is deceiving. Every single one of these great frozen cathedrals has been carved from the glacier front and cast out to sea, as the ice sheet here retreats at unprecedented speed. The rate of reduction of the Greenland ice cap has tripled in the last 10 years. Earlier this month, a vast chunk more than a mile deep simply crumbled away in a single day. The captain says the currents here are making the icebergs unstable, so he wants to keep the boat moving. But even from this distance, you really get a sense of the scale of the ice here. The Jakobshaven Glacier is one of the most active in the world, the biggest single contributor to sea level rise in the northern hemisphere. And it's carving now at a record rate, breaking off 20 million tonnes of ice into the sea every single day. The big issue is global warming. Um, and a part of the scientific relevance of this place is finding out whether it's global warming or what's causing it. But there's no discussion that everything is changing right now. It's just a matter of if it's us changing it or it's some kind of cycle um, doing it. But the glacier front is only half the story. The real question is what is going on up on the inland ice. 10% of the world's fresh water is frozen here. At its core, it's more than three kilometers thick. We made our way in up the fjord in a borrowed 4x4. We had a grid reference and the chance of a lift with a passing scientist. We're flying over the, um, the land terminating margin of the Greenland ice sheet here. We're just uh, north of the Arctic Circle. Dr. Alan Hubbard is leading a team of researchers from the universities of Swansea and Aberystwyth. They're studying the melt pattern of the Greenland ice sheet. We flew in over frozen crevasses in the fracturing ice, landing at the scientists' summer camp, 10 kilometers onto the ice, beneath us more than 600 frozen meters. And it's kind of uh, suffering pretty extreme rates of melt at the moment. We have. Uh, some equipment here, but the, in the background there, there's a pole uh, that was installed two weeks ago. And as you can see in that time, there's been getting on for two and a half metres of melt of this region of the ice sheet. They've been doing seismic testing here, dropping explosive charges beneath the ice to try to map the dynamics below. Up here, there's only one way to get the equipment in and out. The ice sheet is almost lunar, an unending frozen horizon as far as the eye can see. But all around the surface is mottled shades of grey, dust from a form of industrial soot called cryokonite. What you see in there is um, a bunch of particles of, of uh, aeolian dust, that's dust um, from the margin of the ice sheet and, uh, and black soot, and just particles that are in the air caused by industry and combustion engines. And that stuff is blown about, it lands on the surface of the ice, and basically because it's dark compared to the ice surface around it, which is white, um, it absorbs a lot more of the, of the sunlight from the sun and a lot more of its energy, which creates a positive feedback, and so they effectively drill down into the ice sheet. Greenland's glaciers have been in retreat for thousands of years. That in itself is nothing new, but it's the rate of acceleration that's alarming scientists here. The Arctic is seen as an early warning system for the rest of the world, and its message this year is emphatic. Katie Stallard, Sky News on the Greenland Ice Sheet.